All right, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocquer, your host for this episode, as we catch up on some of the news stories over the last couple of weeks or so, as I've been scouring the internet to try to find a few things to talk about of interest today. Just again, a reminder, if you're um, interested in buying a Tesla and you want some free supercharging uh, credits or kilometers and miles, you can use my uh, code here and uh, that'll set you up. So follow all the, the links for the code. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and let me get to some of the stories for today. All right, so it's another month or so and October EV sales are out and I'll quickly just recap them. As you can see here, the Tesla Model 3 is by far leading the pack. It will be the number one all electric vehicle or EV on the globe for this year for plugins. Anyway, great to see sales. Total sales are 2.12 million. Now remember, last year we did about 2.2 to 2.3, so we only need a couple hundred thousand units to surpass last year's. So it looks like we'll finish the year at about 2.5, 2.6-ish, maybe squeeze 2.7. Depends how things go. Now, as you guys know, for brands, Tesla is the number one brand at uh, 352,000 and change. As you can see, the other players rounding up the top 10. All in all, a good month for October, and it looks like this year is going to be pretty good. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have saw a little while ago I tweeted about GM boosting revenue for committing more into the all EV marketplace as they want to leverage their investments and get on the bandwagon by throwing more money. Uh, Chairman and CEO Mary Barra revealed that the company is going to offer 30 all electric models globally. So by 2025, 40 percent of the uh, of these units will be U.S. entries with uh, battery electric vehicles by the end of, as I mentioned, 2025. They're throwing money at this. They're upping their older commitment of $20 billion, now upping it to $27 billion through, again, the first five years. Uh, and that's to deal with uh, building more EVs and AVs, autonomous vehicles as well, as they want to... Uh, invest in that. So some of the key takeaways is that uh, those EVs that they're going to launch within the next five years in this decade will be um, are all around the world and more than two-thirds of them will be in the U.S. or specifically, sorry, in North America. They'll come from Cadillac, GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick will be the divisions that will have these EVs. They're increasing their engineering and advancing the state of the Altium battery packs. They're increasing range as well from Altium. They're gonna up it to about 450 miles. Uh, that's uh, most likely gonna to, going to be EPA miles once it's been tested uh, on a full charge. That's quite significant depending on the, the pack that you get. And more than half of their capital spending will be on uh, product development for the electric and the AV programs. Now, GMs are also working on their second generation, Altium Chemistry, and that's to basically focus on producing more energy density at less than half the cost of today's chemistry, which is great. I don't know what that chemistry is. I'm sure if somebody has it, they can put it into the uh, comments here. Um, and uh, that's great because we know that we need to get the yardsticks moving forward even more to get battery costs down, to get costs down on EVs, to get them comparable to internal combustion vehicles. Now, GM is already prototyping testing on this next generation technology, and that's supposed to be out in the next uh, few years as well. So great to see GM step up and pour more money into it, and let's keep our eyes and see what happens. Now, sticking with major OEMs, Volkswagen has announced that their commercial vehicle plant that's in uh, Hanover in Germany is going to uh, be uh, retooled and some significant investments are going to be poured into that plant to make uh, more electric vehicles. Uh, VW is going to commit about 680 million euros, so it's about 807, 807 million dollars US into this plant. It's a multi-brand plant. Now remember, VW Group is comprised of a dozen or so brands, so a few of the different brands will be built here. The vehicles will be built here, and they're going to look at, in, at developing and building three fully electric D slash SUV models, um, and that's going to be um, predominantly flagship projects as they want to uh, uh, make these uh, EVs. They're going to be premium vehicles, they're going to be 100% electric, and they'll be highly automated. So all the stuff that uh, we see everybody starting to do. Production will start in 2024, so just at about three, four years. So let's wait and see what happens there. But again, I'm, I'm very happy to see VW continuing with the investments uh, in all different facets of their business. And just a quick video that came out, uh, I'll, you're seeing a little bit of it now. It's a Tanner Faust uh, driving uh, the all-new Volkswagen ID4 around a track. 
um, taking it for some of its limits uh, just to get a feel for what it's capable of. Uh, so it's, it's a great vehicle that uh, he says uh, because of the balance of it, the instant torque, of course, the weight, uh, center, low center of gravity that we know EVs have, all these things. He has a lot of fun taking it around a track, and I'm not going to play the whole video. It's a couple of minutes long, but definitely check it out. Um, just kind of shows a little bit more about the ID4, about how, is it, how we expect it to handle on real life situations. There are already some very limited reviews coming out on some pre-production, and this is a pre-production prototype, so it's not going to have all the bells and whistles. It's going to have some software glitches, that kind of stuff right now. But just again, just uh, great to see what EVs are capable of if you're unsure, so check out the video. And not to be outdone, um, Hyundai and uh, Kia Genesis, of course, they're all uh, one in the same from a company standpoint. I have developed a new e-platform called the eGMP. That's going to underpin their next generation of electric vehicles sold across the uh, Hyundai Motor Group brands, uh, including those that I mentioned. Some of the, the stats about this new uh, chassis, sorry, this new um platform is that it's going to have 800 volt hardware so we should expect some faster charging speeds from those because of the underlying 800 volts they're going to start uh, and i talked about this i think a few shows ago about the ionic brand that'll be their branding for their electric cars moving forward electric vehicles moving forward from these ones uh, they're going to start with ionic 5 and there's already some spy shots here some pictures of some some people what they think the Ionic 5 is uh, booting around getting field tested. Um, it's going to be an electric crossover vehicle that's going to be revealed next year. It's going to be based on the uh, retro styled 45 EV concept. Uh, there's also going to be a, an Ionic 6 which will be a sedan which will arrive sometime in 2022 apparently. Um, it's, and then there's going to be a larger Ionic 7 which is an SUV, larger SUV due, due in 2024. Um, again, the emphasis on this platform is a longer wheelbase with short overhangs, so you get a, a flat passenger floor, of course, and allowing a much more wide accommodation of seat arrangements and interior things that you can do uh, for creature comforts and all that kind of stuff. So I like to see that. Um, it's also going to be the most power dense system that uh, Hyundai Motor Grip has ever created. It's about 10% more density than the current EVs with lighter packs using pouch standard cells in different layouts and quantity. I'm not sure the manufacturers, but I'm sure uh, they probably have a couple of suppliers for the cells. Um, vehicles, uh, they're saying that vehicles built on this new platform will have a base driving range of more than 311 miles on the WLTP cycle. So let's take 20% off of that. So, you know, the high two, 275, 280, 285 type range miles, of course, so can do the conversion yourself. Um, and of course, they are going to support up to uh, 350 kilowatt CCS fast charging. So that's good. Again, that works in combination with that 800 volt architecture. Now, also another little tidbit is that this platform is being designed for bi-directional charging right from the start. So we'll be able to do things like vehicle to load functionality. Um, they'll have a charging control unit instead of an onboard charger, all that good stuff. And you can supply up to 3.5 kilowatts of power for accessories. So good to see the investments and uh, the, uh, the plans for Hyundai taking shape. And I'll be curious to see and watch, uh, keep our eyes on this and see what comes out. And just a quick announcement that came out from the Japan government, the Japanese government, that they're going to continue uh, to uh, have subsidies for all, for EV, EVs, especially all electric vehicles. And they're actually going to double the subsidies for them, uh, starting with a budget that they're outlaying for the next couple of years. That will include both privately owned vehicles as well as commercial company fleet vehicles. The current um, incentive right now for battery electric vehicles is 400,000 yen, which is about 3,200 euros. They're going to raise it to 800,000 yen or 6,400 euros. Um, and that again, is uh, uh, EVs that are um, to be charged exclusively with electricity from renewable energy because Japan is really pushing people to get into renewable energy. So whether their provider is, uh, is you know, using some form of re re renewable energy or they have their own uh, self-generated solar power or green power purchase from energy companies, whatever, all qualify for this. Um, now, Japan itself has set a target a goal of zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, uh, and they've tightened their emission targets as well for vehicles uh, going into 2030 and beyond. So good to see if you live in Japan that you'll be able to get some more dollars to help you get into an EV.
And finally, a little, little story I found uh, neat because I always like to see when uh, different vehicles are greened. <laughs> and this is a company called Green Machine, actually uh, headquartered out of Scotland. Uh, they presented a street sweeper. You know, those things that go around and clean the streets, we all need them, that's for sure. And this is powered by hydrogen, so a little bit different. They do have a ele fully electric version of this as well. So they've got two different models. Um, and the hydrogen is based, uh, it's based on the battery electric platform as well. Um, it'll have some nuances that you can have different types of hydrogen whether it's exchangeable tanks or single fills and then you go refueling um, but they want to address customers that have both hydrogen refueling infrastructures and with and without that so they're going to do that they haven't revealed prices but uh, I, I'm assuming that this is going to be we'll start seeing some of these in the UK at some point uh, cleaning streets and hopefully it'll branch out because certainly any municipality and area that uh, uses these machines will benefit from zero emissions all right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Always appreciate you watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, put some comments, like the video if you like it. I always get a few people that don't like it, whatever. Um, I try to do my best, folks, and uh, send me some ideas. If you want to hear stories, if you want, to, want me to talk about different topics, of course, on the show, please send it to me on, on the email and comments uh, or in comments as well. Again, I always want to thank my Patreon supporters. You know who you are if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, please check out the link for more information. Um, as we get nearer to the Christmas holidays, it's going to be different this year with what's going on. But hey, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They're talking about vaccines. I'm learning more about it myself uh, through the different resources here. There's a, going to be a, a very interesting year next year as we come through this. So we only have a little while to go, folks, uh, another few months. So please, everybody stay safe. Follow your local health guidelines. We will get through this all together and stay safe. Um, lots of stuff happening in the EV world, as you can see. So continue to uh, follow the marketplace. Follow me on Twitter if you have it. I, I do a lot of stuff uh, almost every day. I'm doing something on Twitter. A lot of the articles and the stories that don't make it into the show, I'm, I'm putting it out on Twitter because there's so much information. I would have hour-long shows or more than that if I were to, to capture everything. So I just try to capture snippets of stuff that's going on. So follow me there. Um, and again, keep your eyes and ears peeled on the EV revolution. And until the next time, Everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.